Okay, so yeah, that was the start of my trip in Hong Kong, and yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I'm actually back in San Francisco now, back home, and it's actually late June. Uh, I'm actually in the passenger seat of my friend Alex's car. We're actually heading down to Casino Matrix now. But yeah, I intended to film the entire vlog in Hong Kong, but the day following my trip to Macau, I unfortunately got sick with the flu and was bedridden for the remaining few days in Hong Kong. And when I got back to the States, it actually took me an additional several weeks to get over the flu, the jet lag, and essentially feel good enough to talk some poker with you all. But yeah, you didn't tune in to hear me moan about being sick. So back to the content. And before we dive into the actual hands though, I want to run through a few more highlights from the trip. For starters, I got to get a better glimpse of what my brother does for a living. Chinese bamboo is very strong. So yeah, joking aside, my brother's in the business of scaffolding and it's a pretty intense type of career. So it uh, requires a lot of physical strength as well as uh, mental fortitude. And so a uh, ton of credit to my brother for, for doing that. So yeah, after the first uh, week or so of spending time with my brother, the sister-in-law and the nephew, uh, it was time to visit the part of town that my dad actually grew up in and meet up with uh, some extended family that I haven't seen for about 15 years to have a big family dinner. Friday, May 17th, here in the Long area of Hong Kong. It's a district in the Hong Kong area, an area that a lot of my family still lives. And I showed you guys earlier the house that my dad used to live in and he grew up in, and it was my grandfather's house. And actually in the area tonight to have a big family dinner with all these folks here. And as you can see, they're playing some mahjong. And I thought about jumping in the game, but going to Macau tomorrow and don't want to go broke before I head out there because all of these people that you see back here are sharks. So I'm going to save my money for the game of poker, which I know a little bit better than the game of mahjong. So yeah, spent a good day and a half in Macau. And before diving into the hands, I want to touch on a few things about the area, the game. For starters, thank you again to those of you that gave me the heads up about the two locations that you can play at in Macau. And those are indeed the Wynn and the Venetian. Secondly, the rake is incredibly high. I uh, played at the Wynn and the rake is 5% up to $200 HK, which comes out to about $28 US. So. Pretty hefty rake. So these next few details are more specific to the win as I didn't get a chance to make it out to the Venetian. But for one, the games are 10 handed. Next is that you actually have to get your own chips. There are no chip runners for the poker room. And to make matters a little bit more inconvenient, the closest cashier cage is actually about a five minute walk from the poker room. And yeah, they're really strict about phone usage and recording. And so some of the clips that you see 
I had to be very strategic in capturing those. Uh, they treat it very much like a table game. So if you're sitting on the table, you're not allowed to have your phone on the rails or check it. And so if you do want to check your phone, you're just going to have to step away from the table. So yeah, those were the main details. I ended up hopping into the 5100 game. I think the buy-in limits were 5,000 to 25,000. And so I actually bought in for 10,000. When I went to the cashier, I actually took out 25,000 just in the event that I busted. I didn't want to make that uh, you know, sad walk to pick up more chips. And so just want to have additional bullets in my pocket if needed. So I uh, bought in for 100 big blinds. To keep things in tune for this vlog, I'm actually going to do the hand recaps in HK dollars, but uh, I'll make sure to leave some conversion details on the screen as well. All right, first hand of note, there's a cutoff race to 300. The button calls. I'm in the small blind with pocket tens and you can definitely put in a race here, but I just started playing the session and haven't been able to fill out the players yet. So I just decided to call. So we go three ways to a flop of 943 rainbow. Good flop for my hand. I decided to check it expecting the initial razor to see bet a good percentage of the time, but action actually checks through. The turn is a king of diamonds, which also brings a backdoor flush draw. I check it. Initial razor puts out a bet of 500. Button folds rather quickly and I'm not ready to give up on my hand yet. Um, it can definitely have some ace-king and some king-queens in this spot, but you can also have diamonds here, so I make the call. The river is a deuce of spades, so diamonds miss. I check it over to the cutoff and he puts out a bet of 1300. And now it's just a, another same decision point as the turn in terms of whether he has a king here or diamonds. Given that I'm beating Miss Diamonds here and just started the session and I'm planning to play with these players for quite a while, I think it's also reasonable to see how these players play. So I end up tossing in the call and he turns over pocket nines for the flat top set. So not a hand that I thought he would have showed up with in that spot, but uh, yeah, he takes this one down and it's good to get some information uh, nonetheless. This next hand, there's an undergun race to 300 from what I believed at the time to be a pretty tight player. And if I was to man the button with uh, ace-10 offsuit, I decided to call here. Looking back, uh, I would have liked to probably put in a three bet here, I think. Ace-10 offsuit doesn't play particularly well post-flop, but at the time I had position and I figured, you know, why not see a flop? So uh, I elected to call there and small blind and big blind call as well. We go four ways to a flop of queen, queen, 10, two diamonds. Checks to under the gun, he puts out a bet of 400, so a down bet of about one third pot. For that price in my holding, I think it's okay to continue, so I make the call and both of the blinds fold. The turn brings a jack of diamonds and he checks it this time. It's not a good card in the sense that the front door flush gets there and it should be hitting a majority of his under the gun opening range with hands like ace king plus, but uh, or he could just be giving up in this spot with a hand like eights or nine, something like that. So with that in mind, I decided to check it back. The river brings an ace of spades and he checks it rather quickly. There aren't too many value hands that I beat at this point, so not really worth considering a value bet here. It did cross my mind briefly to turn my hand into a bluff here, given that I block full houses. And it's a bit of a semi-advanced play to turn my hand here into a bluff, but ultimately I decide to take the conservative line and just check back. Uh, he turns over king 10 of spades, so he rivers the straight. So I yeah, had him beat on the flop, but not the run out uh, in my favor here, so lose this one. So yeah, proceeded to lose several pots after this, uh, tried to make a hero call. Uh, calling down on turn and river with ace high and end up losing to queens and was still trying to figure out the the game essentially and getting acclimated during the first hour and a half and because this is one of the or this is the sm lowest state game there you got you get a pretty good mix of players uh, in terms of those that are a little bit more experienced and some that are also kind of just starting out in playing poker and so I was just trying to feel that out and try to figure out the best strategy uh, to find some success at this table. So I did start to settle in after the first couple of hours when this next hand comes up. There's a late position limp. I'm on the button with ace queen off suit and I raise it to 400. Small blind puts in a three bet to 1600, folds back to me. And I had a little bit of conversation with this player earlier in the session. He's a good thinking player from the UK. And I think he can be doing this with a variety of hands here. So given that I have position, I decide to make the call. The flop comes 875 rainbow. He checks it and I decide to check back. The turn is a six of diamonds and he checks it once more. So fill in pretty good that uh, he doesn't really hit any of this board. And so given that this should kind of hit my perceived range a little bit more often than his, I decide to start turning my hand into a bluff here. And I put out a bet of 1300 and he thinks for a little while and he makes the call. The river comes a 10 of diamonds completing the backdoor flush. The small blind checks it rather quickly and I can either just give up here or continue telling the story of having a nine and I think it's definitely plausible to have some nines here even with diamonds. For example, a hand like Jack Nine of Diamonds, Queen Nine of Diamonds, Ace Nine of Diamonds that would have made it to this river. And so I decide to continue the story and I fire out a bet of 3,500. 
he tanks for quite a while, I want to say two, two and a half minutes, and he actually has the chips cut out to make the call, and after deliberating about it, he ultimately decides on a fold. So, nice to get this bluff through, I think. Uh, not the best candidate in terms of my specific hand holding here with ace queen offsuit with no diamonds but uh, it was a good spot here given the position dynamics and kind of having a low board that should favor my uh, three bet calling range more than his three bet range pre-flop so yeah just a good spot and situation uh, to get this particular player off the hand I'm, I'm guessing he had a hand like pocket kings it feels like and so uh, he's one of those players that's smart enough to recognize that uh, that board favors my range much more and ultimately decide to let it go so happy to take this one down all right this next time is pretty interesting there's an early position race to 300 there's four callers and it gets to me in the big blind with a7 off suit closing the action here and getting a pretty good price so i toss in the 200 to call we go six ways to a flop of jack nine four two clubs checks the middle position who puts out a pretty small bet of 300 cutoff button and small blind call and for this price i think it's okay to peel here with having the ace of clubs in my hands, so that's what I do, and the initial raise are full. Fourth street is when the hand takes a bit of a funny turn. For one, he accidentally flips over the burn card, which is a deuce of clubs, so it lets me know that there's one less club now, and he's allowed to proceed because it's just considered an exposed card. Uh, but what he does from here is pretty funny. He ends up counting out three cards as if he's trying to do a flop, and he gathers the cards and he flips them over, and the first card we see is the ace of diamonds and this is when he realizes that he's already put out a flop and so before revealing the other two cards uh, he calls the floor over there's a good few members of the table that feel that the ace of diamonds should be ruled out and it shouldn't be the turn card but after the dealer explained that that was the correct card that was supposed to be the turn card it's just the other two cards were improperly dealt as part of that turn card uh, that's ultimately what the floor rules. So the Ace of Diamonds stands, and those other two cards end up being the Burn and River uh, as it was supposed to be. So yeah, of course, the Ace of Diamonds is a good card for me. So when Small Blind checks it, I put out a bet of 1K, pulls back over to Small Blind. He's like at 950 left. He was playing pretty short throughout the session, and he wasn't happy with the ruling of it being an Ace uh, for the Ace of Diamonds being valid but he ends up stacking off anyway. And the river comes, a queen of diamonds. He tables his hand, which is queen 10 of hearts. So we had an up and down straight draw, but missed and made a pair of queens instead. And my ace takes this one down. So yeah, I was losing about 10K in the game prior to winning those two hands. And after winning those two hands, I was able to get out of Stuck City partially, cut it about halfway there. And that's when this next hand comes up. I'm in middle position with King Jack of Clubs and I raise it to 300. Cut off and big blind make the call. We go three ways to a flop that smashes my hand. It comes King Jack 5 Rainbow. Checks to me, I put out a C-bet of 500 and only cut off makes the call. The turn is a nine of spades, which completes the most obvious straight draw being Queen 10. And given that I have top two pair on this board, I convince myself that that's gonna be the most plausible hand that he has here. Uh, when calling and the way the hand has played out so far. So I decided to check it and Cutoff puts out a bet of 1,000 and I make the call. The river brings a three of diamonds and I check it over to Cutoff and he puts out a bet of 1,800. So yeah, I convinced myself that he does indeed have queen 10, but I think that's a mistake here because you should always be putting your opponents on ranges rather than specific hands. Uh, he can definitely have some weaker value hands that I beat, a hand like king nine, jack nine, but so all that considered, I toss in the call rather than put in the raise. And he turns over a hand that I did not expect to see as ace-king off suit. So uh, my hand's good here, take it down. I would have expected him to have three bet pre-flop having had position on me, but uh, in this case, it uh, works out in my favor. This next hand is a bit of a unique one. Middle position opens for 900, so 9x, and a bit of a unique uh, raise size here, not something that you often see. And up to this point, this player has kind of displayed uh, some mannerisms, some plays that would suggest that he was a bit of a, a gambly type person. It gets me on the button with pocket kings. And I think regardless of whatever I do here, whether I call or raise, it's gonna look strong given that his uh, opening size was so large. But given that he's shown a willingness to put chips in play, I decided to raise here and I raise it to 2000 and he makes the rather quick call. We'll go heads up to another flop that smashes my hand. It comes king eight four rainbow. He leads pretty quickly for 1500 with about 4500 back and I decided to trap here so I just make the call. The turn comes a seven of diamonds 
and I don't want to just let a free card peel off on the river here so I put in a bet of 2k he's got 4500 back so I'm hoping he just shoves over or at least makes the call uh, but after thinking it through for about a minute he decides to fold so take this one down would have liked to get stacks in here but uh, still happy to to pick up some chips our last interesting hand of no we're playing six-handed there's an undergun raise to 300 hijacking cutoff call I'm in the big blind with seven of clubs, eight of spades. Pretty good hand to, I think, just see a flop here, so I make the $200 call. We go four ways to what some might call a semi-favorable flop here of five, six, seven, all spades. It checks over to the cutoff who puts out a bet of 700 with about 3,500 back. So I definitely got an interesting decision point here between calling and raising. The merits for calling, I think, are just hoping to, to see a cheap turn and realize equity. But, you know, with two players left behind me to act, I might get pushed out of the hand potentially. And the raising, the, the merit for raising is that it maximizes kind of the playability of my hand on this particular board texture. So that's actually what I settle on. I raise it to 2000, hoping to get, you know, stronger spades out of the hand um, and also have, still having a ton of equity with my hand. So the other two players do fold and the cutoff goes all in for 3,500 more. Pretty easy call here for just another, I think, 2,200 or so, and that's what I do. The turn comes a 10 of spades, so I make my flush, and the river brings a 3 of clubs. The cutoff turns over, pocket sixes for a flopped middle set, and so get the get the run out that I was hoping for, and take this one down. So that wraps things up for the poker in Macau. Was in the game for a total of 20,000. Was stuck around 12K uh, at the lowest point and was able to get all the way out of it and book a small win of 1400. So cashed out 21,400. Uh, nice to book a small win to wrap up the trip. As far as plans going forward, gonna be in Vegas uh, late June to early July and haven't thought it through completely, but not sure how much vlogging I'll be doing going forward. Uh, I've been focused on other priorities over the last month and I kind of just want to be putting more volume at the tables as well. So definitely want to say thank you to all of you for tuning into the videos. Uh, one of the main tangible goals I set out when I first started the channel was to visit all the notable Bay Area properties uh, for poker. And with the exception of a few small card rooms, I think I've been able to do that. We've been to Bay 101, Casino Matrix, Grayton, Lucky Chances, Oaks Card Club, Stones Gambling Hall, and Thunder Valley. So happy to have gotten all of those locations captured on the vlog. Again, thank you all for tuning in and, and that's that. Give me some Damian Lillard. Give me Damian Lillard. Give me some LeBron. Give me some Steph Curry. <laughs>